Those that play Magic the Gathering, you're gonna see the greatest feeling in standard playing Magic the Gathering. You're gonna like it. We'll have timestamps in the video and in the comment section. Once you see it happen, you're gonna be like, yes, that's gotta be the greatest feeling. At the end of the video, I'll have some MTG talk. Enjoy the vid. Guys, this is the greatest Magic the Gathering feeling in the world. Countering fires and intervention with a quench. With a quench. <laughs> I just, I was like, you know what? We're playing versus Fires of Intervention. I'm just gonna just do it. Search for a land really quick. I'm like, we just gotta do it. It just has to be done. Oh, and what's better than countering Fires of Intervention once? You quench it twice. That's what you do. Isn't it the most beautiful thing just seeing a Fires of Intervention just quenched? Just, just done. Draw a couple cards. You just end the turn here. The ability to scribe to. And what's better than countering fire interventions once, not twice, but three times? Oh, it feels so good. It just feels so good to do it. He's really fishing for that last little. Oh, look at that. Quench, quench, counter, quench, quench. It's the greatest feeling in magic. Are you kidding me? Counter that. Narset, or do we want to counter what he's going to bring out with Narset? Yeah, let's counter it. Is that a good feeling too? Just countering Narset with Ales? I don't want to get too cocky here though. I mean, come on. You know, it's Fires of Intervention. I just want to bring him out for so much. But. Uh, we need to protect our hand here, so like I can go one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but he's just gonna drop something stupid. Uh, let's see, one, two, one, two, three. I can drop. I don't even care if we lose. Like I, it doesn't matter to me. By the way, guys, you can check out my other videos. By the way, you know just. Guys, this is the greatest Magic the Gathering feeling in the world. Countering Fire's Intervention with a quench. With a quench. <laughs> I just, I was like, you know what? If we're playing versus Fire's Intervention. I'm just gonna just do it. Search for a land really quick. I'm like, we just gotta do it. It just has to be done. We're gonna counter that thing. there. I'm like, we have to do it. It has to be done. So he's dropped. I was like, that, that's the, isn't that the most beautiful thing? Just seeing a Fires of Intervention just quenched? Just, just done. <laughs> Let's grab the two. He's got Fae of Wishes right here, so he's going to do his own scrying. Um, do we want to counter that Narset, or do we want to counter what he's going to bring out with Narset? Yeah, let's counter it. Is that a good feeling too? Just countering Narset with Ales? I don't want to get too cocky here though. I mean, come on. You know. It's Fires of Intervention. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we can't kill it. Just why not? I just felt like we were on a roll. You know, I just I felt like there was a thing we had. Oh, and what's better than countering Fires of Intervention once? You quench it twice. That's what you do. I 
just want to bring him out for so much. But we need to protect our hand here. So, like, I can go one, two, one, two, three, four, five. But he's just going to drop something stupid. Let's see. One, two, one, two, three. I can draw a couple cards. You just end the turn here. The ability to scribe two. And what's better than countering fire interventions once? Not twice, but three times. Oh, it feels so good. It just feels so good to do it. I don't even care if we lose. Like, I, it doesn't matter to me. By the way, guys, you can check out my other videos, by the way. You know, just... Uh... Yeah, it's a good time for Nisa. It's a good time. And what we're going to do here is untap uh, Island to act like we have some stuff. And turn. Alright. So, you know, like, what's going to come out here? Nickel Bullets can come out. Okay. Dawn from Dreams. Good one. I'll give him that. Put two cards. All right. All right. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, we're gonna tap this right meal. Two. Tap it right meal. Untap that right meal. All right. Now we'll get two. Two, four, six. I think six is reasonable. We'll draw three cards. Oh, I can untap one of them. I don't want to get greedy. I want to cast it for eight. Yeah, we'll do eight. Probably should have done four. Um, well, we'll let him do that, but we're going to tap him out to do it. Mystical dispute. All right, so he does it. He's really fishing for that last little... Oh, look at that. Quench. Quench. Counter. Quench. Quench. This is the greatest feeling magic! Are you kidding me? By the way, you can check out um, my top 10 videos. Uh, my, excuse me, the top 10 cards I can get rid of Oko. When Oko was in standard, you know? So, while we got our opponent just kind of, you know, doing this. And then we'll just return that. Um, but no, seriously. So I think this is like the greatest feeling in Magic the Gathering. It's awesome. You quench it. fires of intervention. Fires of my intervention. But no, um, so anyway, what I'm trying to say is a lot with the Magic the Gathering with the banning of Oko. By the way, you see the top 10 cards get rid of Oko. When the day before it got banned, I put a top 10 list. And six of those cards got rid of Oko faster than what you can cast Oko. So for three converted mana cost or less. So I've been playing the like, Magic the Gathering since 1994 when I was a little kid. And then I played till 2004. And then I came back in 2011. So I've seen every single decade. Oh, it's time out. 
Um, so I've seen every single decade of Magic the Gathering from we little kid all the way going into college. And so the one thing that I, I do want to say is that a, a lot of people will say that um, like half the people were kind of like when Oko was getting banned and Once Upon a Time, and Once Upon a Time got banned yet again in Pioneer. Yeah, you like that? Um, you like that? All right, you have to watch football to get that analysis. Um, but anyway, um, Kirk Cousins. So the um, thing about it is, is that people are 50-50 split. So when, here's the thing. When Oko gets banned, like Once Upon a Time gets banned, okay, so on MTG Arena, you get reimbursed through your wild card, right? You get reimbursed through your, you know, your, your wild cards. Well, in real life, you know, little Tommy boy who goes and buys a booster box of Aldrain, when he opens up his booster box and he pulls an Oko, he doesn't get refunded. Um, so he, he can't go back to the local game store and say, oh, you know, Oko got banned. And so that's the thing. See, I don't, see, I don't like really do embrace excuses. I like to embrace, you know, solutions kind of deal. And AKA not embrace excuses, AKA bannings. Um, so for great example, when Oko was in standard, they reprinted a card to deal with, which is in my top 10 list, to deal with Oko. Oh, isn't that bad? So we're not Mythic, it's December, we're not Mythic this month, but I was Mythic in October, Mythic November, and I, I'll be uploading my, um... I'll be uploading my red green deck that I, w I want six and one and very competitive in diamond status which is one step below mythic which is what we're playing at right now as you can see um and so as you can see right here i do play in drafts also have an m20 draft that's available that's up right now right meow something right meow um so i don't have cats but you know i'm a dog guy but whatever so here's the thing so you know, when you saw Oko get banned, there was a card called, you know, Sorcerer's Spyglass that dealt with it. They printed it right in our drain, right? So here's the thing. So here, we're Sorcerer's Spyglass. Let's see all the decks. I know there's a lot of decks, right? Play a lot of matches. Kind of crazy. That's why when you see me in matches too, by the way, uh, PS, you'll say, how does he know what color the deck's going to be, what he's playing? like on turn one, you'll see me in a lot of matches. The reason why I know is because number one, um, when you do a lot of analysis on, on hands, so for great example, um, you, know, you know, for great example, so I know if you have two lands in your hand, let me get the source of Spyglass. Let's edit the deck. Actually, let's go ET. Yeah, so let's go. Yeah, we'll edit the deck. Boom. So, I'll just show you source of spyglass sideboard. People we need to use sideboard, source of spyglass. There you go. Boom. A source of spyglass enters the battlefield. Look at an opponent's hand. Choose any card, any card name. Any you can choose Black Lotus if you want to. Any card name. Activated abilities with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So it shuts down pretty much planeswalkers. Read that last paragraph or like a run-on sentence, because that's what it really is. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So the thing about it is, is that what was Oko? All it did was plus one, plus two, minus five. All activated abilities. It shuts it down. What is this? It's an artifact. It can be played in any single deck. It's an artifact, so you can't complain about it. And it's two mana, faster than cast Oko. By the way, they reprinted this card in Aldrain, the same set they printed Oko in. Wizards was basically like, hey, here's a powerful Planeswalker, but here's stuff to deal with it. But nobody's playing with the sideboard anymore. You're playing the best of ones. And that is the deal. And you're like, what is up with your sideboard? You have a Kendra's Transformation, a Crushing Canopy, uh, Questing Beast, Shifting Ceratops. Yes, Shifting Ceratops. It cannot be countered. Protection from blue. So basically, it should say protection from two thirds of the format, because all you see is fires of intervention that we quenched, Esper Doom, blue white control, and then red deck wins. And now Simic Flash. Correct. Yes. All right. So. 
so here's the deal. Um, that was ranked. Also in the best of three. There's the deck. Wow. Um, we're two. We're we're two and zero. Oh. Actually, you go five zero oh with the deck, and then you go mythic status. So, by the way, if you want to see my red green deck, we go mythic status with. I'll be uploading those videos. And feel free in the comment section, guys. Um, tell me what you want to see in the comment section. Again, I'll be playing the Pro Tour qualifier. But if you want to see pack on openings, um, I'm also going to be doing that as well. Also in draft play, that should already be uploaded on um, uploaded already on here. So Al Drain should be uploaded. So if you want to see kind of the new, like if you're just new or coming back to the game, um, and you want to see the perspective through my crazy eyes, um, <laughs> then you can watch the drafts. And I always encourage you to watch my opponents as well because you can learn from my mistakes. I make them. I make mistakes. Um, and to be honest with you, there is no one deck, by the way, that dominates the entire field. Uh, a lot of people in modern will say that, like, their deck dominates. There's no such thing, guys. Um, there's, there, there's no such thing. I, I see that a lot in modern. I'm a modern player myself. I also play standard, but I'll see that a lot. I play four-color disruption in modern, so, um... But you also be able to get to see that play, but right now I'll be uploading standard videos. But getting back to my point, so here's what's happening right now with Magic the Gathering, is that we'll see a lot of players play on um, MTG Arena. So it, when a card gets banned, going back to my point, you get reimbursed with wild cards. So look right up here. So as I'm putting my pointer right on that little red rose, right, um, I have 13 Mythic Rares, 21 Regular Rares, 64 uncommon, 72 uncommon. These are all wild cards. So basically, what the heck does that mean? If you know what this means, just bear with me for 30 seconds. For those that don't know, show your appreciation. Okay. Um, so if you have a mythic rare, that means I can trade in this wild card. Okay, and it'll be called craft. Craft is just a fancy word on MTG Arena for transforming. So I can transform these mythic wild cards into any, I can get any Mythic Rare that's available on MTG Arena. Any one of them. Okay? Usually your Mythic Rares are your Planeswalkers, but like in War of the Spark, not so much, because they printed, I think, over 20 Planeswalkers. And Tefiri Time Raveler, by the way, um, yeah, you know, that's played in the Esper Doom deck, like all the control decks, Tefiri Time Raveler. That is not a Mythic. It's actually a Rare. Shockingly. So, um, the 21 rares that I have, I can get any rare besides a mythic rare. So I can trade in any of those wild cards that you're seeing for any, um, rares in the game. Now, when, when cards get banned, like Oko, right, you get reimbursed on MTG Arena, you get reimbursed. You'll get free wild cards, and then you can go out and get any mythic rare that you want. But in real life, you don't have that. So I think what's happening, because we have so many formats, we have so many formats now to play Magic the Gathering. We have Standard, now we have Pioneer, right? Then we have Modern, uh, Legacy, Vintage, Popper, Brawl's coming back. Now they're going to be pushing Commander, which I think is a great thing. Um, a lot of people in my area actually play Commander. Actually, people in my area play Commander more than they do Standard. How about, how about those apples? You like those apples? Um... <clears throat> But the thing about it is, is that that's what's happening right now. That's the thing. So, and then we have physical play, then we have um, MTG Online, and then we have MTG Arena. And so what's happening is that a lot of people just don't play with sideboards. Um, because a lot of people that play on MTG Arena, you are playing the best of one. You're playing single elimination, just like the match that you just saw me play. Single elimination. Um, <clears throat> boy, it's so sweet to quench, uh, uh, I just, I just was like, I have to make this video. I just, I'm like, I'm quenching his, like, what is the best feeling right now? Quenching fires of intervention. Huh? Yeah. Narset of what? Huh. See you tomorrow. Uh, but the thing about it is, is that I think what's happened is the gameplay is getting skewed. So half the people wanted like Oko and Once Upon a Time banned, and the others were just like, just ban Veil the Summer. Just ban Veil the Summer. 
so I can play with my sideboard cards and I can kill Oko. So I can play with Noxious Grasp. That's, that's, so, and I think what was happening, especially in the videos, you want to check out my Oko videos, um, <clears throat> it was split 50-50. And when I talked to real players, um, they were split 50-50 as well. And I think this comes back to a lot of arena players that if you just play online, you want it banned because you get reimbursed. But in real life, you're not seeing, you're not losing the money. So, for example, when Field of the Dead got banned, remember Field of the Dead? When that got banned, I know there's been so many bannings. That was before the bannings of Once Upon a Time, before the banning of Oko, um, before the bannings of Pioneer. Um, but after the bannings of Faithless Looting and Hogak and Modern. So there's been so many bannings and so many different formats, you have to kind of keep up with everything. So, um, what happened when Field of the Dead got banned? Oko went from 30 bucks to 60 bucks. Questing Beast went from 18 bucks to $40. So they shot up for about three weeks. So if you would have bought Oko's at 60 bucks a piece, you would have spent $200. And $40 just to wake up the next weekend to get banned. So you're out 240 bucks if you play standard. Because if you play standard, Oko's are worth nothing to you. And even when they went from 60 to 30 bucks, you would have lost $120. And then Questing Beast went from 18 to 40. Now they're down to 15 bucks as I make this video. So Questing Beast went from 40 to 15 bucks. So if you were to buy a place out of Questing Beast, you're out 25 bucks per questing beast, which is $100. So do you see when a card gets banned, not only does it affect the card that gets banned, but it affects the other cards that help deal with that card or help ignite that card, the auxiliary cards. Think about Arc Light Phoenix, right? Let me show you Arc Light Phoenix for a second. Let's, um, let's go into the decks. Let's go the Arc Like Phoenix. You ready for this? Boom. Okay, so when Arc Like Phoenix got banned, or excuse me, I think it banned. When Faithless, when Faithless Looting got banned, well, I'm not going to show you. Let's just go back to the where we're at. Um, when Faithless Looting got banned, let me see. Let's go to. So when Faithless Looting got banned, here you can stare at Chandra. Um, but. <laughs> Um, when Faithless Looting got banned, which helped put cards into people's graveyards, Arc Light Phoenix went from 30 bucks to $15. So even though Arc Light Phoenix didn't get banned, the card that put stuff in graveyards, that got banned and therefore affected Arc Light Phoenix. And Surgical Extraction. So Surgical Extraction was a $60 card in June of 2019. But because Faithless Looting got banned, Surgical, Surgical Extraction deals with graveyard decks. Well, when they started getting, started banning things that put things in the graveyards, just like Arc Like Phoenix, Surgical Extraction went from 60 bucks. Now you can buy it for $18 in December. That is a $42 price drop. Do you see how this is affecting people that play the role play? Now, here's the thing. I see it from both angles. And that's the reason why I make the videos how I do, because I play in real life. I play on MTG Online and on MTG Arena. I see it from all three different optics. And that's called objectivity. So I see where people are saying, ban it, ban it, ban it. And then when it gets banned, everybody cries about it. So it's like, what do you want? You know, it's like, what do you want? It's like um, a walk to remember. What do you want? What do you want? I don't know what I want. Um, the thing about it is, is that I can see that happening. And you're like, what's this got to do with fires of intervention? It's like, oh my gosh, get Susie in here. It's crazy. Like, yeah, boy, well, it's got to do with fires of intervention. Absolutely nothing, actually. But I just think it's a great opportunity to talk about what's happening on Magic the Gathering right now. And... I am not one of those people that played, I played back in 1994, but I'm not one of those people that sit on a Mox Emerald and go, hmm, 
how dare there be new players? No, because it's just, and I'm listen. It's just as much as you need collectors because collectors, the people that played the game for a long time, those are the people that are going to spend money on Magic the Gathering. Okay, very rarely do new people spend money on a booster box. You know, again, little Tommy boy, he's not going to walk in and drop a hundred dollars. You know, drop a Benjamin on a box of Al Drain where cards are just getting banned. <laughs> no, but he's, they're not going to do that too often. But if they do, and they open up a pack, and they do open up an Oko or Once Upon a Time, and then it gets banned the very next week, do you think they're really going to want to play the game? Now look, I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon. You know, I'm, I don't know anything about that. I can pretend to, but I don't. But the thing about it is, you get people coming from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon to play this game, they'll play it on MTG Arena, they'll like it, and then, you know, they'll like it, and then they'll spend a little bit of money in real life. You know, they might replicate one of the decks that they're building on MTG Arena, a much more deck maybe on a budget, less significant deck, but enough to play tabletop magic, to have fun with their friends, to show up to a Friday Night Magic, um, to get to the local game store to play in a booster draft, um, you know, and and they'll spend money that way, you know, 10, bu 10 bucks here, 15 bucks there to enter a draft, and slowly build their deck. And then eventually, after a year or two, they start to become novices, and they start to build competitive decks. And um, those are the players that will eventually end up in Pioneer and cross over into Modern as their cards get a little bit older, and they, you know, Whatever they're doing in life, they start working more hours, or they graduate college, or they take out student loans in college to pay for the magic gathering habit. Don't do that, okay? I'm just saying. Um, I've seen people do weird stuff with their student loans. And, um, <clears throat> you know, guys, use your student loans. I, I mean, I'm, I study pharmacology, occupational therapy, and pathophysiology, and the thing about it is, is that you know college is very expensive it's going up i know it has nothing to do with magic the gathering but if you're gonna take out student loans what i see people doing crazily a lot is they'll buy a, a brand new car you know with their student loans um so their student loan bill will be like five thousand dollars and the car that they bought will be worth you know they'll buy a new used car they'll buy like a, a six thousand dollar car so their cars that they just bought on student loan money is worth more than their tuition for the year and what happens is over time that catches up with you you know so and if you're going to go into the biological sciences those are very expensive classes um so just put that in consideration so um again i use the analytical mind that i use in the classroom and as a student athlete uh, when i played sports so if you don't know my history i played uh, football boxing and baseball i won't count bowling as a sport but if you do then i played four sports um <clears throat> And I know what it's like to be, you know, the student athlete at the same time, you know, and having all that pressure. So that's just off to the side. I'll get back to that later. But with Magic the Gathering, realistically, what you're seeing is, is that you're seeing online players, because they don't play with sideboards, and because of the best of ones, really, they're not, they want cards to be banned instead of coming up with solutions and putting things in their sideboard. So I know some of my videos might be not popular at the time in opinion but I'm coming from an objective place because I see it from all three places again magic gathering online physical play and MTG arena and so I see it from all those facets and I've seen the game being played every decade and because of that I can look at that and say I understand why people want things banned and then I can understand why people don't because Here's the thing, the physical players, the people that pay money, because without the physical players, here's the summation. Without physical players, this guy's doesn't exist. Your ability, you know, to talk about anything that doesn't exist. You know, it doesn't matter. Look, nothing exists. Look, none, none of this exists. So how do you want to play? Do you want to play in a ranked draft? Do you want to play in, you know, a standard ranked? None of this exists without standard, without physical players. Because what do you think, do you understand, um, to, to find, to get all these cards, to get all these cards in this deck, do you understand that a programmer, so I actually built a website, 
And I really didn't have any, again, my history is not building websites. But I built, I built a website, it took me a very long time because on the back end of everything, they have to hire a programmer, right? A website designer, a developer. They have to hire all those people. They have to hire a website that can control all the bandwidth of all the players that are going to be playing on MTG Arena simultaneously versus each other. Now, here's the thing. How do you think they're able to do all that? Money that they earned over the last 25 years off of physical players playing the game. Year over year over year, making the money, making the profits so they can give you a product. That's how they're doing it. Without physical players, there's none of this. You can forget about playing MTG Online. You can forget about playing on MTG Arena. You can forget about it. You can just forget about it. So the physical players, if you burn them and ban cards, and they all walk away, the game's over. But just as much as the collectors and the novice players are important, you need new players. Because without new players, this also goes away. All these cards, all, your whole entire collection, poof, it's worth nothing. Your Black Lotus that's, you know, beat up and worth $5,000, you know what it's worth? A piece of cardboard. That's what it is. It's a, it's a piece of card. It's a piece of cardboard. It's what it is. And so, you need new players. So, I, I see that. That's why when I play at a Friday Night Magic and I'm playing in a draft and I go undefeated, I, I'm like 2-0 and I'm playing for somebody, sometimes I, I'll just split. Sometimes I'll give them the win. You know, just so they can just get one booster pack as a prize. You know, I'll, I'll split. And I do that with new players because I realize you need them. So when you're looking at these bannings and all this other type of stuff, you have to understand, guys, if you just play on Magic the Gathering online, you have to understand the people that spend the money to go get those cards. Because if they're not spending money to go get those cards, those cards are never printed. And if those cards are never printed, you can never play with cards on Magic the Gathering online or Arena. You see how that works? So I hope I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a good place, and I hope you understand that part. Um, so that's why I said when I made my top 10 video for Oko being uh, 10, top 10 cards that can get rid of Oko, and six of those cards can get rid of Oko faster than which they can cast them, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to, to, to throw solutions out there for people. Um, like, for a great example, what's happening in the core sets? Um, like, so when I played 4th edition, 5th edition, 6th edition, 7th edition, they reprinted Birds of Paradise, Wrath of God, um, Ball Lightning, Dark Ritual, ooh, Dark Ritual, Counterspell. An actual Counterspell says Counter Target Spell for 2 blue mana. They reprinted those cards. You know why? Because it gave new players a chance to play with older cards. And it also gave people that had older cards to continue playing with them in, a, in the current format, the standard format. Back when I played, it was called Type 2. But in your standard. So it allowed old players to continue, play, to continue, continue playing with their cards and play in standard. And it allowed new players to experience what it was like to play with older cards. And it also balanced out the formats. So for great example, when Walking Dead was banned, the reason why is because there's nothing in the format to get rid of lands. What if they would have reprinted an M20 Ghost Quarter? What if they would have reprinted Build a Ruin or Ghost Quarter? What if they would have reprinted Stone Rain, Destroy Target Land? What if they would have done that? Then you don't need a ban filled to the dead. But the problem is a lot of these core sets are viewed as a new set. Yeah, they'll reprint a few cards here and there, 
the whole point of the, the additions, which is your core sets, was to stabilize the format. Allow new players to play with older cards. And allow players that have those old cards to continue uh, in a rotating format to continue playing with those cards. Like Birds of Paradise. Like a Ball Lightning. Like a Counterspell. Like a Wrath of God. Um, like an Ensnaring Bridge after Stronghold was released. They're not doing that anymore. And so it's led to, um, you know, of course, Wizards has to make more mechanics with each new, uh, every year they have to make new mechanics uh, for a set. They have to make new cards. And of course, they can't play test every single card that exists and look ahead two years on how one card can interact with another card. But it's just, it's the same thing. People wanted to get rid of Dark Ritual. Okay, so that's out. People want to get rid of Counterspell. That's too powerful. People want to stop reprinting Incinerary Bridge. Okay. And then what happens is that you allow other cards to take over, and then we just ban things. And so what I'm trying to say is understand, if you play on Magic the Gathering online or MTG Arena exclusively, and that's all you do, that's great. Um, because Magic needs new players. And I think this is a great time because... But you have to understand, this doesn't exist. Me clicking on this deck online does not exist if you don't have physical players. And the physical players are the ones taking the risk with their money. So when something gets banned, I don't cheer it. I just imagine all the people that lost money. Not just with the card that got banned, but the arc-like phoenixes of the world, the surgical extractions of the world. The questing beast that went from 40 to 15. That's also what I see. But it's a great time. And as far as the bannings and Pioneer. So you know Magic the Gathering is fake, right? Like we all know that, you know, like there's no such thing as a Nisa that shakes the world, okay? Right? I mean... So, <laughs> um, so if we can all admit that, I think this is a perfect time to use this analogy. So, what I'm trying to get at is, like, look at Superman. Or we all know Superman's fictional. Okay, do we? We all we're all going into this knowing that everything's fictional, right? <laughs> everything's fictional. Okay, so in order to see Superman's true powers. In order to see his true powers, you know, flying faster than speeding bullet, x-ray vision, how do you see his abilities? Well, he has to be able to use those abilities for you to see them. There has to be something evil, an unnecessary evil, a villain. Because without a villain, what is the point of Superman having those powers? Really? I mean nothing so to see his good powers to see his good the goodness and that's why when you watch a movie and we do realize that movies are fiction right you go see a movie and they're fiction you, you pay for it you know that's going to be fiction just like wrestling that's the same thing with people that watch wrestling um they know it's fake but they're paying just like a movie you're doing the same thing uh, you know you're paying for something that's fiction but you enjoy the suspense, the drama, the animations of a movie. Well, you like to see good in things. So in order to see the good in Superman, his powers, the goodness of his powers, you need a villain. Because without a villain, there's no point in him using his superpowers. And so in a kind of a weird way, you need a villain to see the good in things. Sometimes you need a little bit of bad to see some good. As long as that good overrides the bad, then we all walk away feeling good. And that's what happens in your movies. I guarantee you almost every superhero movie that you see starts off with a superhero. But you know at the end of the movie, right, that superhero is going to end up on the good side of things. And that's why you walk out feeling good. 
Well, the bannings of Pioneer, I cannot believe I'm making this analogy. Um, unscripted, by the way, is uh, that's how I make all my videos, pretty much, is that it's an unnecessary evil. These bannings and Pioneer. I know everybody's complaining about them, and, you know, I understand that. Reasonably so. But it's an unnecessary evil. Because do you want Pioneer to be standard? Or everything just gets banned all the time? Well, that's what's happening right now, but do you really want that? So the bannings in, in Pioneer are an unnecessary evil. And so that's what I kind of liken it to. And, you know, that's just with a lot of things, um, with what's going on right now. And the incredible thing with Magic the Gathering is that on top of all the formats that I discussed, you know, Standard, Pioneer, uh, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, uh, Popper, Commander, the Bring and Brawl back, um, Justin Timberlake was bringing Sexy back, but whatever, um, the Bring and Brawl back, um, you know, how many formats are there? Um, Magic has been accessible ever. It's, it's more widely accessible than it's ever been before. But with that being said, it has led to some very unstability. And, um, you know, I'll give my two cents on this. But, so, to me... Some of this stuff is an unnecessary evil, but sometimes you don't need the, the too much of it, you know? Um, and going back to villains, by the way, I just thought about it. People can relate to villains. That's why they're, they're humanistic. Villains are humanistic, right? Because the superheroes have the power. So that's why kind of villains are more humanistic. I think people can relate to some of the villains because they're... Like the Joker, he doesn't have special powers. You know, Lex Luthor doesn't have special powers. They're human. And that's why I think a lot of people can relate to some of the, these superhero movies because there is a humanistic part to a villain. Right? We all know that we're not going to fly and see X-ray vision and be Superman. But there's these villains have a humanistic part to them. Right? There's, there's, a, there's some relatable character. And that's why I think... When you see things like Heath Ledger, it was very relatable to a lot of people. A lot of people that suffered from sleeping disorders, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, very relatable. Because he was playing a character on some level was humanistic to a lot of people. Because not everybody has Batman, right? Not everybody's a billionaire, right? I mean, come on. Even if you win the lottery, the Powerball, and you win a billion dollars... Do you think you actually see all those billions of dollars? No. Um, not everybody has a billions and nobody's going to fly. Right? Well, hopefully they do. Um, we'll probably see pigs fly before humans, but whatever. Um, but here's the thing. So, there's a humanistic part to this. And I believe there's a humanistic thing to Magic the Gathering. Like, oh my gosh. Like, oh my gosh, Susie. It took them forever to get to that. It's like, yeah, bro. Um... Just like when I weight train and I play sports, okay, I kind of preface that. When I weight train with a lot of people, it really wasn't about the physical, it was about the mental part. Um, when I weight train with a lot of people, so a lot of people that want to lose weight, they wanted to lose weight because they felt insecure. A lot of guys that wanted to bulk up and build muscle was because they got bullied, they got picked on. They weren't the first picked in sports. They weren't the tallest. So they can't make their body taller, but they can make their body wider, more muscular. So a lot of times when people go to the gym, it stems from an insecurity, if you really think about it. Go into the gym next time um, and walk in, and you'll see a lot of insecurity. Out of that insecurity, they can build confidence. And I think also, too, people go, you're like, what's the guy do with Magic the Gathering? And you're like, again, it's like, will you just get back to Magic the Gathering or gameplay or something again? I enjoyed the fires of intervention getting quenched, okay? Um, <clears throat> but here's the thing. 
So, there's a humanistic part to that, and I believe a lot of people play Magic the Gathering as a distractor to get away from stress. To get away from things. A lot of times people don't feel like they can fit in, so they'll play Magic the Gathering, they'll go to a local game store, they'll start doing that. And it's a good, it's a great way to get away from stress. Just like when, you know, I was in a bodybuilding and I modeled and all that other type of stuff. Um, you know, some of that was not only to better myself in sports, but it did stem from insecurities. And I think people do the same thing with Magic the Gathering. And I'm very well aware of that. I'm very well aware some people can have anxiety and they go to a local game store and they start playing with people and it starts to expand, you know, um, their horizons a little bit when it comes to dealing with anxiety or feeling down. It, it could be a distractor. And as long as you realize that Magic the Gathering is fiction, <laughs> we have to make that distinction. Um, so I realized that. So in, in my videos or in my gameplay, if anything that I talk about gives you release from stress, takes you away from anything that you're dealing with, just like when I would help people weight train or I weight train myself, if I can do that in any of my videos, then I've done my job. I've done my job with these videos. And so hopefully, you know, like I said, and I'm very well aware of that. And I think a lot of people enter Magic the Gathering for those reasons. So it's a great game to play. Um, as long as you're fiscally responsible, just like, you know, with anything. Um, it's a great game to play. I think MTG Arena is a great format. Um, I think, um, you know, there, it definitely can be better. I definitely think I, I have some good opinions based upon facts. Um, and strong opinions based upon of experience that I could offer, but I'll save it in this video. I won't talk about it in this video. Um, but if, just like I said, if my videos can give you anything, um, then that's great. Then I've done it. Um, then me making this video was worth it. And so, with that being said, um, you know, I, I just want to kind of end it with that. And the other thing, too, that I just want to end about, how sweet it is that you're requires an intervention with Clench. Isn't that awesome? Take that, Esper Doom, Grixis Control, Blue-White Control, every form of control that's in standard. Um, and here's the deal. I want to leave you with this. A lot of people do struggle with sleep. And a lot of times at night, your mind's racing. And worrying can be like a rocking chair. It can get you moving, but get you nowhere. You ever see a rocking chair? It goes back and forth, but it stays in the same place. It doesn't get you nowhere. A lot of times people lay in bed at night, and their mind is racing about things. You know, your mind's racing, but your body's staying still. You know, so your, your mind's like a rocking chair. It goes back and forth, but it stay, your body stays in the same place. So try to relax. So if you're doing this during the day, have a good day. If you're doing this at night, have a good night. And there, we stop fires of interventions. Until next time, thank you. And if you can help me at all with this channel, feel free to share, subscribe, and like. Seriously, I don't make any money right now making these videos. It, it took me eight hours to edit a video. Um, if you see how I make my videos and, and how I put up everything, you'll see how many sequences, how many scenes I had to put up. Um, literally, it can take me six, eight hours just to put together a video behind the scenes. I haven't asked anybody for money or donations as I made this video. Doing this all for free. And so, um, if you really want to help support the channel out and um, support the Magic the Gathering side of the channel, then all you have to do is share, subscribe, and like. I call it SSL. You ever hear me go SSL, share, subscribe, and like? But seriously, hit the subscribe button, like button, comment in the comment section. And that and share the video, that will do a lot if you really want to help. Um, and again, um, I just come from experience. And, you know, like I said, I have an analytical mind. And so that's just the way it works sometimes. Um, so anyway, um, and again, if you watch my gameplay and you see, like, how do I know things and how do, well, because it's like I said, so, like, if somebody has two land in their hand and, um, 
they start off with seven cards, there's a 120% chance by turn three that they're going to get a land, right? So I know that automatically. And then just seeing a lot of the decks, because you'll see a lot of my videos, because some people have uh, uh, said stuff to that, like, how did you know? Well, the thing is that how I know is that I'll see, I'll see somebody play with, like, a land, and, and then I'll say, okay, they're probably playing that deck. And then, therefore, I know that they have this amount of this, this amount of this, and the probability of drawing that, that. If they had one card in their starting hand, then they have a play set of four of those. And the odds of them drawing that is a certain percentage. Just like on a poker table. If somebody has, um, on a table of nine, on a table of nine, if somebody has pocket aces, which is the best hand of poker you can have in Texas Hold'em, you still only have a 33% chance of winning. 33% chance of winning on a table of nine with pocket aces. So, if you kind of use the analytics and you kind of use that towards Magic the Gathering, so when somebody's playing, that's kind of like what I'm doing in my videos. When you kind of see me, I'm like, okay, they're probably going to play this, they're probably going to do that, they might do this, they might do that. That's what I'm doing. I'm, and, and it comes with experience, seeing so many different matches and playing so many different times. So with analytics and seeing all the matches, you kind of get a grasp on, okay, all right, well, they're playing Simic Flash, so... Um, they're gonna try me. They're gonna try to get me to counter that, but they really want to probably play that. And I do make mistakes. And trust me, you will learn plenty from my mistakes if you watch my videos. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to say that type of stuff. Again, try to relax. Yeah, and your mind racing. It'd be like a rocking chair. Just back and forth that stays in the same place. Or it could be like a rocking chair. It can get you moving, but actually, it really just get you nowhere. And that's what your mind can do. So anyway, if you're doing this during the day, have a good day. Also, have a good night. And again, feel free to share, subscribe. Until next time, thank you. Have a good day.